We are very interested in social interactions and uh, uh, one major avenue, one way to get into this issue has been for a social touch and how, how it's represented in the brain. Are very special forms of touch, sexual touch and, and tickling. Tickling is a very unique uh, sensation. We study indeed, we study rodents a lot, rats in particular, uh, and what we find is that rats are, are very playful and for us uh, this was a big surprise, so for me this was one of the stunning papers maybe like 20 years ago when people uh, came up with this idea that uh, uh, rats are ticklish. Yeah? And uh, initially, the scientific community was, was very skeptic, and so was I, uh, uh, because at, at the time when, when, when Panksepp and Burgdorf uh, brought uh, this idea up that, that rats are ticklish and might, be enjoy, might enjoy being tickled, uh, uh, the, the debate was at a totally different state. Uh, people debated if, if maybe a chimp can smile. Yeah, this is what something they would uh, sort of allow for. But the idea that a rat would be ticklish and would actually make giggles and uh, a rat-like uh, laughter, this was a, a, a very astounding proposition. And so this is how we got into it. and. Uh, uh, I still find the behavior that rats show when we tickle them is, is very striking, yeah? it's very uh, remarkable. The sounds they emit, uh, the, the obviously joyful behavior, uh, this is, uh, is, is, is quite striking. We focused mainly uh, on us tickling uh, rats. Uh, uh, so. Uh, we, ca we haven't studied uh, the mutual behavior of rats all that much, but we, we think uh, that there is stuff happening between rats that is similar. So first of all, um, when we tickle animals, we always isolate them from the others uh, for a day or two. And that makes all the difference. So when we, when we have isolated animals with whom we play and whom we tickle, uh, they are so much more ticklish than an animal you take from a group. So what we, uh, uh, the, the animals that come from a group, they are much less keen to be tickled. Yeah? So uh, we think there is something happening between the rats that satisfies that need uh, to be tickled. So now when you look at the play behavior of rats, uh, you hear a lot of the sounds that we hear uh, when we tickle them, when they play with each other, uh, uh, it's kind of also positive sounds. Uh, uh, they, have, they have different types of sounds, uh, uh, sort of so-called 50 kilohertz ultrasonic sounds that they do when they're excited, when, when they get food, when, when they're in a good mood. Uh, and these you would see when you tickle them, but also when they play with one another. So we think that uh, uh, this uh, potential to be tickled, uh, this capability of ticklishness, uh, that they use it in their mutual play. But it's something we haven't studied all that much. In some cultural structures. So what our thinking is that the large part of the brain, yeah, the parts that are uh, big in, in It's clear that there are big individual differences in ticklishness and uh, it's a part of the phenomenon that we don't understand that well. It's not so clear to me why uh, some people are so ticklish and others not. Uh, or part of it we understand better, other parts we do not understand. Uh, let me explain. So, like in rats, uh, in rats and in humans, it's a strongly age-dependent phenomenon. Uh, so young uh, kids are much more ticklish than adults, 
and uh, it correlates with playfulness. Yeah? Uh, so uh, rats at the age where they are most playful, they are also most ticklish. So this kind of makes a little bit of sense, yeah? uh, that uh, this kind of uh, uh, different individual differences between different ages, uh, they kind of make sense in the general behavioral context. What doesn't make sense to me is that you, you very clearly have also rats that are very non-ticklish, yeah, uh, very unimpressed, uh, very non-eager to be ticklish, whereas you have others that are very, very ticklish. Typically, it goes together with playfulness, yeah, uh, so the, the more playful ones are, are also the more ticklish. What I don't understand is, uh, why, you, why would you have these uh, big individual differences? So the way we think about the finding that both uh, uh, rats and uh, humans are, are show very similar phenomenology of ticklishness makes us think that it's something uh, quite important, yeah? uh, preserved for at least 100 million years. Uh, that's where we diverged from the rats. So it's a very old, very conserved behavior, which makes us think it must be very relevant for, uh, for, for mammals uh, to be ticklish or for us and rats. Yeah, otherwise, it wouldn't have been preserved 100 million years. Uh, at the same time, we then do not understand why uh, <laughs> some rats are very ticklish and uh, others not. Same as humans. Why are some humans so ticklish, uh, others not? We, we have no good take. How it relates to puberty and uh, sexual touch. It turns out that sexual touch has a performance. Puberty in mammals is typically socially controlled. Uh, and social factors have an immense uh, uh, impact on on how uh, puberty plays out. And this has been known for quite some time. So in, in rodents, what they showed uh, in the 70s, essentially, is that when you put a young female mouse uh, together with an old male or so, uh, it would advance puberty uh, by, by weeks. Yeah? Whereas when you, when you feed it optimally or you change nutrition, you can also change puberty but by a day or so. So this, what people initially thought that it's just something about crows, uh, this is not correct. In, 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 in most mammals, puberty is uh, a socially controlled phenomenon. And uh, uh, what the research focused on then for many years and what was first identified are, are pheromono pheromonal factors, uh, like when the uh, when a young female mouse smells an adult male, the pee of an adult male, it advances puberty. But we looked at these effects and we found this very interesting, but what we also saw is if it just is exposed to the smell of an old male, it's just a, a way weaker effect when you put it together with the male. And this made us think that uh, uh, it's worth looking into uh, the, the tactile effects. And uh, indeed, uh, this is what uh, our, our work then showed, uh, is when you put uh, a, a female a rat or a mouse uh, together with, uh, with, uh, with an old male, uh, it will advance puberty only uh, very significantly if, you, if they can have direct contact. And what we then also did is uh, we ourselves uh, had touched the animals and saw that this, uh, first of all, it changed the parts of the brain that represent uh, the genitals. Uh, this has been a, a long of, or a focus of our research, uh, but it also advances puberty. So uh, it also changes the body. So uh, sexual touch, it's, it's not something that stays on the skin. It, it changes... Uh, uh, the brain quite a bit and it also changes the body because uh, uh, puberty is uh, strongly uh, socially controlled in mammals. So those are advancing effects. If you don't touch the animals, uh, they will also go into puberty finally, but uh, they will uh, go through puberty a, a lot faster. And a region that we are, brain region that we are particularly interested in is a part uh, of the brain that represents the genitals. Uh, and uh, this is a, a part of the brain that we identified a few years back in, 
uh, in, in rats uh, and it has a very uh, interesting structure. A range of studies also indicated is that the activity in that part... Winning the prize was a lot of fun. Uh, most of all, it, gave, uh, it gives you a lot of freedom because you get a lot of money uh, for research and I could do um, even more of what I wanted to do uh, afterwards. Yeah? So, uh, uh, yeah, I think for me it came along with a lot of freedom yeah, uh, to do what I wanted to do. And we always uh, did uh, kind of different topics, but uh, the research we do, like on tickling, it's a, it's a bit uh, uh, out of the ordinary. And uh, this was, of course, uh, um, um, fostered by this prize. Yeah, came uh, along with uh, a lot of freedom, enabled uh, me to do more curiosity uh, driven research, more the things that I wanted to do and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun then.